Hi everyone, it's Becca at So Darn Twisted. Hope you're all doing okay. Today we have the second episode of the How Do I Use My Cricut for Junk Journaling, um, which is envelopes that, believe it or not, you can knock one of these out in a matter of seconds once you set up the first file, then that's it. You know, um, they are absolutely genius. You can cut beautiful shapes and stuff, like really ornate shapes. You can have lacing where you know bits are cut out of it kind of thing the, the sky's the limit but i'm going to show you how to make a basic envelope today just like this one yeah it's got a scalloped edge but other than that it's very very basic but it is very quick to do and very easy to do um now what you'll need to do is uh, if you don't have cricket subscription uh cricket access then you'll need to find a downloadable svg um, or PNG, transparent PNG file in the shape of the envelope that you want. There are obviously a myriad of free resources out there. Um, you know, I, I will try to link a couple of the ones that I particularly like, but if you go on Pinterest and you search, you know, free envelope SVG, you will be inundated with results and, you know, you can literally just go nuts, um, you know. But I will, like I say, I will try to put a couple of my favourites in the description. Um, but obviously you might want a particular shape of envelope, you know, a particular uh, flap style or anything like that. So you can just literally go and find what you personally want and then do exactly the same as I'm going to show you in the video. So let's get cracking. We're going to go ahead and upload the um, SVG file that I was talking about. So... I've got one here already, but obviously if you're forgotten or you're unsure, you can go and find it or you can um, just drag and drop it in there. And then that will bring it up for you as a cut file already because it's an SVG. Okay, so now it would show up obviously like that. So that's fine. I don't need to. <laughs> right, so we're going to go ahead and pop that onto the canvas excuse me now a lot of the time you will find when you download svg templates like this that it looks like that there's lots of stuff going on and it's all black and you've no idea what anything is uh, so the first thing to do is to click on that and make it a neutral color oh why i've got it in here twice i don't know let's get rid of that okay so that's now a color that you can see now this part is going to be your score lines which are here but the way that this particular one has been set up it's a bit different normally they will show just as dotted lines so and your machine will just score those automatically for you on typically the example I've chosen it's not set to score so if you find that that it is set to cut just go into operation and select score and just do that for all four of your lines and then that will change that and it'll do it properly for you but most things you find where it's a, a template like this it comes you'll open it and it will look like this already so I just typically chose one I had that <laughs> I didn't <laughs> so if you use a template like this one it makes it much easier to know whether or not you can fit it onto the size paper that you have. The diagonal ones can sometimes be a bit tricky when you're just starting out. So I think when you're starting to do this until you get the hang of it, try to deal with templates that you can sort of say, OK, well, my, I know that my paper size is X, so I need it to be. So for the tutorial, I'm going to be using um, 21 centimetre high um, which as you can see that's actually just over 21 at the moment but obviously you don't want it to reach the very outside edges as you can risk tearing the paper things like that so we're going to change that to 19 centimeters you could go 19 5 20 but I like to make sure it's it's quite safe the other thing that you can do um, as well if you've got specific uh, sizes is you can create a new shape and you can make this shape by unclicking that there. So my paper is 21 centimetres by 14.8 
centimeters. So that will make it like this. So now if I send that to the back, I can drag it and I can just check that everything is well within the parameters of my paper. And then if you wanted to, you could then just tweak the size of it, make it a little bit bigger if you, you know, if you want to, that kind of thing. So what I will say though is when you're dealing with things like envelopes, make sure that your proportion constraint is switched on because if you start messing with the heights and stuff, uh, you know, it, it can start messing around with the ratios that have been preset. Most of the time it won't, but it's better just, just be on the safe side. So once that's done, we don't need that anymore. So we'll get rid of that. And then this, we will just go ahead and make it. Obviously, if you're using, oh, sorry, I'm silly. I forgot to attach it. <laughs> so once you've got everything there together, click attach. If they haven't already, again, most people that do SVGs have it already attached. So I didn't think to check. Okay, so there we go. We're all on the right track now. <laughs> so we know it's going to fit within our paper. So that's fine. You can just leave everything there as it is and go on to continue. Uh, this paperweight I have currently is 200 GSM. So I'm gonna put it onto the medium cardstock, which will cover that one. And then obviously it will tell you now what tools that you need to put in to the machine. And it will prompt you obviously to do, uh, to change the tool to make it cutting from scoring. So we're just gonna go ahead now and get that cut. So as you can see here, I've got my cute little envelope, but I've used some, if you guys can see that, I've used some cute uh, travel card. So as I say, your score lines are already there for you. I don't know if you can see that, but they are already there. So all you have to do is go ahead and fold along those score lines that I've just completely missed because it's too far away from my face. And I can't see. <laughs> oh my days. Vision. It's highly overrated, right? So I've got that one. I'll fold in that one. Obviously, ordinarily, I'd use a bone folder. But this is purely just to show. And then you're just going to glue down there. You're going to punch out a little notch if you want to. And there's your envelope. So it's really quick because once you've done the initial setup, as I say, you can print multiple copies of this in one go, um, but you can just save the project within your design space. And then when you want that envelope, all you've got to go do is go back and click make it, you know, and then away you go. So you can make one of these in a matter of seconds. So they're always there, always on hand and you know, don't rely on all of the fussy cutting and everything. So much, much easier, in my opinion, to do things like this. You can, of course, also make inserts for the cards, you know, while you're there just by making a rectangle um, and just make sure that it is smaller than that area. Um, if anybody's unsure how to do that, um, I did cover that in the previous tutorial about making tags, about how to drag something else on the top and make sure that it was within your constraints. So, you know, have a look at that. Uh, if you're unsure but yeah like I said very quick very simple and you've got an absolutely beautiful envelope there ready to start decorating the other beautiful part about having it set up as a template as well is that you can resize it to any size that suits your current project um you know and then you can scale it up and down because of the nature of the file it's not that you're going to get um, issues like you do with trying to do that with graphics you know, in, a, in things like Photoshop and that where it ends up looking bad, it won't do it. You can change the size as many times as you like. You can also, of course, mass make them by making smaller ones um, that you can then arrange on your canvas by using the project copies, which I talked about in the tags tutorial that I did. So if you haven't seen how to do that, how to make multiple of the same thing, without having to keep making more on your canvas. You can just do it when it comes to the make function um, and you can make as many copies as you want. You could also make lots of copies in different sizes by duplicating your main one, changing the size of it, you know, duplicate it. If you want three different sizes, duplicate it twice, 
decrease the sizes and then when you go to make it hit as many copies as you want of each one and it will do it the same way for you so it's really invaluable to be able to do something like this using the Cricut so I hope you enjoy that one guys and uh, I will see you in the next video and in the meantime have a great day happy crafting